Author Meg Wolitzer has a habit of tapping into the cultural moment. Her latest book asks big questions about women's power and feminism in the time of Me Too. Jeffrey Brown has this latest edition of the NewsHour Bookshelf. In her first months of college, a young woman has a harrowing encounter with a male student and a life-changing one with an older, renowned feminist writer and activist. The new novel, The Female Persuasion, is about friendship, womanhood, ambition, and power, and addresses issues very much of this moment. Author Meg Wolitzer joins me now. Welcome to you. Thank you. So right off the bat in this book, we have an encounter that one can't help feel the kind of moment that we're in. But you were writing before all that. Well, these are old issues. I mean, yeah. issues around female power, misogyny, uh, the treatment of women, how do you make meaning in the world? These are all issues that I've been thinking about and writing about for a very, very long time. This is a story, as we were saying, about an education of a young woman and her peers, and also about different generations of women, right, and how they see each other. You know, uh, there's a second wave feminist and younger women who are feminists. And I was thinking so much about my childhood and my mother, who is a novelist named Hilma Wallitzer. When I was growing up, she hadn't been to college when she was young, and her parents didn't encourage her in a big way. Mm -hmm. She was helped so much by the women's movement, and I saw that happen. I saw it in my home. I started a, a consciousness raising group. I was part of one and continued it when I was in junior high school. Mm -hmm. And we were so earnest, and we wrote away to the National Organization for Women asking for a list of topics. And they gave us a list that included things like sexual fulfillment and you. Well, we wanted things like when your parents won't listen. Right. But we were these <laughs> budding feminists, and it was exciting. And I thought about the different generations, and I'm very moved by how different people come to make that kind of meaning. Where, where do you get the ideas, inspirations, models for people in the things you write about? I mean, what I, these are these are just ideas that you're that are in your head that somehow you pull out into a into a novel. You know, it's a strange kind of thing that's so hard to explain. Uh, I have a sort of an idea or a problem that I want to kind of work on in a book, and in this case, some of those issues that I mentioned. Oh, and really? It's almost... So the issues were there first. In well. A way. The idea, well, the one main one I would say is who is the person you meet who can change your life forever? Uh -huh. There's sometimes someone when you're young who sees something in you mm -hmm. and that you may not even see in yourself, yeah. but also around those other issues that I mentioned. But that one in particular uh, occurred to me. And I saw this young woman, Greer, who's really hot faced, who whenever she tries to sort of speak up, her face goes, you know, really, really red and hot and she can't articulate what she feels. And then there's this older kind of chic, renowned feminist who mm -hmm. sees something in her and sort of taps her and sets her on a path that she never thought she'd be on. But you know, you know, it's interesting in your case because reviewers and, and literary critics have often noted how you're sort of hitting the zeitgeist in various books of yours, is it, so is it intentional or is that just sort of what happens? I think that people, say, you know, people say all the time, write what you know, but I think that really it's much more like write what obsesses you. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that I've been thinking about forever. Um, there's one way to really know what obsesses you as a writer. Just look at everything you've Googled for the past 24 hours, which is sort of a horrifying idea for most people. <laughs> yeah. In my case, it would kind of be a combination of Virginia Woolf and does this mole look suspicious? So I don't think that those are good novels, <laughs> but other things that I've been thinking yeah, about. Yeah, but the, the, serious... that can help you think about a character, I suppose. Well, it's true because yeah. I had these ideas and then I saw these people. I saw this older charismatic woman and she kind of steps up and says, I'll take those ideas. And that's who you let the book and, run and, with. And why is, a, why is fiction a good way to do that? Beyond, I, I, I know I ask some writers and they say, well, I'm a novelist, so oh. I write fiction. But what, what's your answer? For me, look at this moment we're in. It's the moment of hot takes and people sort of in a fever about ideas and kind of putting things into the 24-hour news cycle. I kind of think of myself as the master of the warm take. I love the intimacy of a novel and how it lets you get to know people. It doesn't have answers, at least my novels don't. Um, I, I just want to kind of let them unspool and mm -hmm. say, what is it like? What is it like for women right now? What is it like for young women? What is it like for these mm -hmm. older women who came of age in a different world? And my novels, I hope, just show a little bit of what is it like. You know, in the, in the world of, um, of literature, especially in discussions of big social novels of the kind that you're, you're writing in, a lot of the discussion has been around the lack of recognition of women writers, and you yourself have participated, contributed to that in, in your own writings, thinking about it. 
Where are we now? I wrote an essay in the New York Times called The Second Shelf, which was mm -hmm. kind of a pun on the second sex. And, and I talked about the sort of different levels of recognition that literary men, literary women had received. And one of the things that I talked about was book covers and how sometimes, and it's sometimes, there are of course exceptions to this, uh, a book by a man might have big bold typeface that said this book is an event. And a book by a woman might sometimes have what I jokingly called a cover that you could call little girl in a field of wheat. And the idea of imagining two men sort of standing on a train platform, what's that, what's that you're reading, Bill? A little girl in a field of wheat? I loved it. No, that's not <laughs> going to happen because the book cover seems to suggest that this isn't for one gender. Mm -hmm. And I feel that books are for everyone, but there, there's a long way to go. There's a lot to be done. So that's the world of literature, and then the larger world you see of Me Too and the kinds of issues you're, t you're writing about in this novel? I definitely see it. It's all sort of swimming around us. I feel like we're in this swirling moment. And as a novelist, I just want to kind of go into a corner and keep looking at things. And, and it's not the definitive thing. I mean, this can't be the novel of the Me Too movement. It can't be. I want it to, these are timeless issues as well as being timely. We've been talking about them forever. All right, the new novel is The Female Persuasion. Meg Wolitzer, thank you very much. Oh, thank you.